Greetings, everybody. This is Zombie 101, and welcome um, to Let's. Um, let me let. let uh, greetings, everybody. This is Zombie 101, and welcome to a tutorial on how to use Necrify, the latest Zombies Animator uh, editor, level editor. This is way different than the last editor. You no longer directly edit stuff, it's way different. So, a lot of these are actual personal files. They're not technically personal, personal, but uh, for hacking projects, these are actually mine. A lot of this does not technically belong in here, but this is basically just customized to my liking. What you want to do is you want to boot up necrify.exe. Actually, when you first boot it up, project settings, I don't think it's going to let me do it because I don't have a project open. Um, pretty much it has a window that tells you what it does. Um, I don't, I don't have it set to do that at the moment. I didn't want to do that because I'm, I'm going to, I'm used to it. Basically, what you want to do is you want to either hit this or file. It's best to hit that. You want the base ROM. This is, uh, that's because I deleted the folder from what I did at the, a video that will hopefully go up the same day, which is how to fix boss palettes. Um, basically, this is your base ROM. This is what you're going to use for your editing. And this is where you're going to save that ROM folder. So let me actually just uh, do this. I'll just name it vid. So name it vid. Create. Once you do that, your project's ready for editing. These are all your necessary uh, files. I do not want to open you. Go away. So what you want to do, or at least depending on what you're doing, this is where all your files are. This is this. Makes a copy of your base ROM just in case. So basically, if I wanted to make a copy of Elite, and then just in case like it broke it, you don't have to. It actually makes a copy of it for you. That's why it's called base. That is the base, and we use the original game where we should have. So if you watch this, that way you're just like, but that's only like the project. No, this is the original game and everything. Uh, my keys aren't set. Um, let me actually set this. It's set to my Xbox thing because I was doing the randomized exam. Oh, yeah, that's right. This that's at the moment. But yes, that's that. So pretty much, um, that's how you create a project. Again, you hit this, you hit browse, you hit the ROM you want, then you just go to the destination you want, then you name what you want the folder to be, then you hit create. It automatically opens up all the levels and does this, so you can just get right into. Creating. Let me just. I uh, was just making sure that that's actually recording because I, I was like, wait a minute. What if I forgot to hit record? It wouldn't be the first time I did. I've also done that during a no hit run. Not fun. So basically, when you want to go back to open a project or whatever it is, you just go like wherever it is saved and whatnot. This is what you want to hit. You can technically hit all files, but I don't recommend that. So just hit Necrify Project, and this will open it. So just like as an example. Um, it doesn't matter where it is, that's your project. It'll remember what you actually had with all the windows and everything. So just like as another example, watch this. See how this is set? Um, I don't really want to do this because it's set to my personal liking already. So as you can see, I always have it set to four tiles. So I'm just going to X out of it. It will ask if you want to save changes to a level. But when you go back to it and you go back to your project... Ta-da, it's saved. This is so you no longer have to reset it every time. Originally, it was said to be one tile, but now I no longer have to do that, which is a good thing. So basically, your your head's probably spinning because this is way different. Um, you don't want to mess with level title. a lot. This is all not finished, except for certain things, depending on what you're wanting to do and how to do it. Title screen, unfinished. Tile sets, unfinished, but is eh there. You can't really do much with that. Sprites is helpful. Misc is helpful, like miscellaneous and whatnot. Um, then there's levels. Pretty much, you can't open multiple levels at once. You can do this now. This is how you open levels. You click on it, you double click. That's how you open levels. You can actually drag levels into different orders, and if you want, what this is for is you can tell it you want a level to display on this side while this level displays here, and then I can put Evening of the Undead up here, and you can display multiple levels at once for whatever reason that you want to do that for. I'm not, I don't know why Piranha Plant made this. Um, to be honest. Um, oh, stop. I want to put you in the middle of the screen. Now I want to put you in the middle of the screen. Now I'll, 
Wait a minute, what you doing? I want to put you in the middle of the screen. Why? Close the level. Go back to normal. There you go. Now it's going back to normal. Okay, so first of all, levels, because that's the biggest thing you're going to want, probably. Levels. This is how you do levels. So this is your paintbrush. Actually, let me do it from start to finish. This is create project opens. This is save. This is save all, for example. Um, just a random thing. This is for if you edited something on one level. So as you can see, undo will light up. If you have something, this is redo. You can actually also bring up a list of what you've done. Sprites, it no longer specifies what you've done. The original was like, move more monsters, move on responding monsters, change tiles. This just says sprites and tiles. And that's because you can do everything at once, which we'll get into that also. So, basically, this is for if you edit multiple things, and as you can see it says save all or save. This is for if you edit multiple things, it'll actually save everything you've done to both. You can see a little star show up, see like it's gone, watch right here. This means you've edited something and it's not saved. When you do this, it saves both. So let me actually go ahead and undo that and save all that I've done that. Save saves to a specific screen and a specific level. Save all saves. It doesn't matter even what you have open. It saves to if you're editing sprites, if you're editing levels, if you're editing titles, if you're editing... It doesn't matter. It saves everything. So make sure that you have not done something that you do not want to save in another level. Of course, if you haven't saved it yet, you can actually or technically close the level. If Even if you save, you don't save, it'll ask. You save, it won't ask. If you haven't closed the level, like as an example, like how I'm going back and forth with Control-Z and Control-Y, you can fix that. If you don't, you're... Just gonna have to refix that unless you have a copy of the level. So, first things first, let's go into levels. So, this is your um, sprites and everything. So, and originally, in the original editor, you could only do items, monsters, victims, all that stuff at once. And victims were also considered the players, but now you can also just do player positions. That's a new thing. And now, instead of just doing one at a time, you can actually do all. So pretty much this just allows you to move everything at once instead of having to go back and forth between categories. And that's pretty much all it does. Also, new sprites have been applied to some things, and there's now descriptions to let you know what things do. I actually find this more deadlier than this, but supposedly this is more deadlier. This is more aggressive Squidman. This is more... Zombie with larger aggro range, which basically means when it starts trying to kill victims, so it's pretty much always in that. Faster moving clone, I prefer to call these super monsters, or super followed by that. This is your regular Martian who moves freely, and this is your strafing Martian moves. The Martian that stays at the top of the screen, I don't remember if it's vertical or horizontal, I have a hard time getting those correctly. But basically this is the guy who goes up and down, this is the guy who moves around freely. This is your regular ant spawning ant, spawning from holes, spawning from the ground, basically. Top of screen, this is your one-shot ant. This works on grass. This is technically incorrect. Power on a plant needs to fix this. It says plants used on the castle tile set, or what the castle set. This is actually plants used with castle and office. So that works with castle and office, just so you know. Because there's not three pir not piranha plants. I always say that now. There's not three pod plants. We're probably going, but wait, where's the one for the office? It's because the one for the castle is the office. I hate that you do this. It's because it's recording and all kinds of stuff. So just ignore that. I'm sorry that's going to pop up. I can't fix that. I don't know how to. Um, anyways, it's probably fixable. I just don't know how to. Like I said, um, without further ado. So that's sprites. I did not mean to do that because that's technically last. So pretty much, this is copy, this is cut, and this is paste. So this, you pretty much already get what that does. Just whatever you have selected, sprites, um, just whatever, you copy it, you paste it. That's pretty much it and simple. This is build your project. So basically, when you're done building your hack, you're doing whatever you want. You hit build, and this should show up. It'll give you errors, and it'll tell you what's wrong. If not, it'll say building. It'll say build complete, and now where you go to get your final product. This is your final product, and it's also not. This could also be for testing purposes or whatever. This is your final product or testing ROM. Again, it just depends. Basically, this is what you do. You're gonna make. You're gonna rename it to whatever you're gonna do, and it's done. And that's that. And then this is run project. This will actually run 
the project so far, and it's technically building the project. Yes, so this is pretty much just running the build of when you basically hit build and you finish your project. As far as I know, should I should only make another ROM. So yeah, it's pretty much running that. Um, this is run from level. This is actually very useful. Um, there's, this is pretty much all your stuff up here. Preferences, though. This is your emulator. That's my emulator show welcome screen. Oh, yeah, there it is. It's, of course, probably because I've not done it. If you have show welcome screen um, checked, it'll brood it up with a welcome screen every time. So I recommend that unless you need it, do not have it checked. Um, come here, turn it off. This is where your emulator is to do this. The next spot. So build project, run project, run from level. Run from level settings, project settings. I have a few things that um, y'all may not because they're not released yet, and I don't know if Corona Play wants to be uh, showing this off. If not, I do apologize in advance. But he said he will upload them in a future version, so I don't think he would mind. This allows you to change, uh, like, show the winner screen on after what level. I think this means basically you don't want to be like after level one. So if you want to show up on level two, you would say after level one. Basically, you would just set it to what you want, hit OK, and then it should automatically run it. Let me do this. So after we beat this level, it should automatically just start playing the winner screen. This is very useful for those who don't know how to do hex, because originally you had to hex it and it was possible to change it. So this just allows you to show the winner screen and stuff easier and whatnot. So that's that. Patches, football player fix, invincible trampoline girl fix, perfect player fix, pop up wall fix, reverse cycling fix, and skull key door weed whacker fix. Fixes the bug that allows players to break skull key doors from above in the grass and castle tiles as by using weed whacker on them. No, the doors in the castle tile set can still be punched through with a monster potion unless the collision of 1d3 is updated. Um, that basically is an address of Hex, by the way, unless I'm wrong. I don't think I got it wrong. Reverse cycling. Allows players to cycle their weapons and items in reverse order by holding the L button. The R and select buttons will open the victim radar. Pop-up wall fix. Fix up, fixes the pop-up wall tiles from turning into the wrong tile when placed in the level directly. When basically, like the trap walls that spring, they're already sprung, directly then shot with the bazooka. Warning. Until further notice, this does not fix every possibility. You use a monster or a chainsaw maniac uh, cuts it down, it still glitches, as far as I know anyways. Perfect player fix. This is because per player 2 never got perfect player bonus. If you were player 1, you got a whole... <laughs> Excuse me. You got a whole heck of a lot of points, because player 1 always got player 2's bonus. This fixes the perfect player bonus to correctly give player two points. Invincible Trampoline Girl. Makes Trampoline Girl invincible instead of them losing collision when touched by a monster. That's because I've discovered... Um, I think if you still have multiple Trampoline Girls, it still glitches it and there's other outcomes that can glitch it. I actually figured out recently because of something I was doing in a hack. Trampoline Girls can die, but not die. Monsters will go after her, but once they've touched her and they've collided with encode... The game tries to think that she's dead, even though she's not, and this leads to the player not being able to save her until they either kill the non-responding monster or go off-screen and all kinds of stuff. But this basically fixes that. I don't know if they ignore her altogether, as far as I can tell they do. So you no longer have to worry about um, her basically glitching out. Again, this is not always. It se seems to be an ish thing, but this should pretty much 99.9% 99.9% .9 fix your trampoline girl glitching app problems. And football player water fix. Fixes the bug where the player can get stuck in the swimming state when hit by a football player while in the water. Um, not many people probably know about that. But yes, that's actually a thing. So these, what you do is you just apply these by hitting the checkbox and then automatically applies them to your patch or your hack. It doesn't technically automatically do it. Um, but it does at the same time, because then when you hit build, build from, from, or run project, and then run from level, that automatically does that. Run from level settings now, continuing on. Starting max elite 1, elite 1B, elite 2. This is all my personal, uh, settings. I don't really need this, so let me actually get this. 
This is basically delete. This is add preset, and whatever preset you want, you just select it, and you come here and you edit it. This is your victims, these are your items, and these are your weapons. This will just bring up a thing, and then you name it whatever you want. I'm just going to do this. This is my preset, and then you can actually tell it how many victims you want. I've not actually tried. Oh, yeah, it automatically goes to one. Um, you can't go over, like, the max. It'll automatically try fixing it. But 99 is the max for specials, which is items and weapons, which is your normal things as max is 99. You can change that to whatever you want. But fair warning, though, this does not affect your project. This is just your run from level settings. It does make a run from level .sfc, as you see here with that. But this is just the specific level. It's not every level. So whatever you have, so run from level settings. Let me actually delete this now. As a uh, example this is everything but the unused weapons when I go here and hit run I should have everything with all 10 victims so that's basically what that does it allows you to test the levels without having to play the entire hack over and over and over again you can pretty much make a say saying go so this is what I would have at this level and you can just hit run from level after editing it to have what you need and like what you would pretty much have, and it just makes testing a lot easier. So that's all of this. This is pretty much your magnifying glass. You can't type in it anymore, so you can't cus excuse me. You can't customize it. This is your furthest away. This is your closest, uh, like zoomed up. So yeah, that's just your magnifying glass. You can use minus and control on your keyboard to zoom up. By the way, I have no idea. Is, is this it? Okay, yeah, that's it. I don't really use the numbers on the keyboard, and a lot of the, the buttons are broken. Anyways, not even joking about that, which is sad. So basically, it's pretty much the same thing. We're pretty much just going to go into the new stuff, but you don't have to even do this. This just helps you. Control G brings up grid. Control H shows the hollow tiles or solid tiles. So this is where players can walk, can or can't walk. Um... There's some new things. Respawn areas. Control R. This is where a zombie will spawn within a respawn thing. I don't remember what it was. Piranha Plant actually figured out something about a certain uh, spawn radius will actually have a monster spawn within the whole radius. And a certain amount will actually have them only spawn at the outer corners. I do not really remember what that was about. And nor do I really know how it works. So I am sorry about that. But without having to actually con uh, constantly do it manually... Unfortunately, Piranha Plant no longer has it where you can use the mouse wheel. I was lazy with that. You now have to type everything. Um, this is your X and Y axis. It's moved from over here. This is your delay, which is how fast it spawns, which is actually also here. You can hold it down. See, it'll actually tell you um, how long it takes for it to spawn. You move the mouse wheel down or up, it'll actually edit that. Same for this. Of course, you have to do it at like a diagonal direction. This is the respawn that actually also edits it at the, right, at the bottom right. So that's pretty much that. But if you don't want to see where zombies spawn, as an example, just hit Control R. This does not only go for zombies. This goes for pretty much anything. Like I can change it to ants, clones, more ants, more ants. Um, I would say more ants, but I can't do that. Blobs, werewolves, Chucky dolls. It doesn't matter what it is, except for victims, non-responding monsters, whatever. It. Well, technically, you can actually put victims and non-responding monsters in there. I don't recommend that. That causes the game to crash and glitch in many ways. Um, if done right, it's still possible that it won't, but it's just not worth it. But anyway, that's pretty much that. Again, another thing, so view. Screen size guide. This is very helpful. This will actually allow you to see what players will see when they play the games. I don't know how to directly use it, but this is pretty much what the players will see when they start. And I don't know how it works for two players, so unfortunately you're kind of on your own with that. Um, but this pretty much just lets you see what the players would be able to see when they're playing the game and stuff. So that's pretty much what it does, and you can use it to make designs that'll trick the player and all kinds of stuff. Also, if you're wanting to make a level that pushes the uh, like the limit of the game crashing in a way for players um, not being able to move, because you can actually move them out of bounds. Don't put them all the way left. Piranha Plane hasn't fixed that. You can actually still glitch that, unless I'm wrong. We'll actually test that. Um, Use the screen size guide. I would recommend zooming up if you want to do this. As long as Zeke and Julie are not past this line, they actually um, won't break. 
basically. Like, just as an example, I'll show you. Zeke should be able to move around just fine. Okay, no. So don't put them that close, because um, that's not what you want to do. Okay, yeah, he's broken. Um, okay, I'm not quite sure how that works. Well, she can, he can't. But basically, you want to use the screen size guide. Somewhere about right here is what you want to do. And that would allow both characters to work just about as far as you can get them. Um, I don't remember, like I said, if this works. So actually, let me do this. I think characters... Yeah, depending on how you do it, though, the screen size guide, I think, actually still works. Yeah, just make sure they're within the screen size guide, and you won't have any issues. Monsters can actually spawn off screen. Um, level 30 is an example. You were able to actually do this in the other editor, but now you can. You weren't able to see the monsters off screen. Like, there were actually monsters off screen like this guy. You weren't able to see it because it automatically cut off just about like, like this. You couldn't go up. Like, you couldn't even see, like, the gray outer areas. You were just able to see what it was there. That was it. You could technically see the gray outer area, but not the bottom. Oh, no, maybe the bottom. I don't remember. Definitely the right. I do know. It's just been, it's been like, about a year now because I've just been using Necrify ever since it came out. Um, so that's view. Next frame only works for levels with tile animations. So level 11... As a good example, you can use Control M to see that. The weeds don't actually grow that fast. Um, this works for um, factory, mall, this, castle electricity, castle spikes, castle weeds. I think you should make it work with um, like a tile animation thing for the palette animation so you can see palette animations moving too. I think you should also make like a trajectory thing to let you know if a Chucky doll is going to get stuck when it spawns. Um, but that's just me. Personal things, basically. Um, restart animation just restarts the animation. There's no shortcut for that. Zoom in and zoom out, of course, it's just zoom in and zoom out. Level. This is where you edit the title. Now, this is where extreme advanced editing, in a way, it's also not extreme, comes in handy. This is your display name, so basically, as an example, as you can see, this says Weed's Gone Bad. If I just change this to a whole bunch of things, you're going to see that it just says... It's been edited, you want to save that, then it's going to show up there. And then in the list of levels over here on the right, it'll also show up as that. This isn't your level itself, this is the title itself. To make new text, you just hold control, then you click um, your thingy, like you hit control and you click on your mouse. And then you can use this to type it and all kinds of stuff. So those who want to fix the T's in their titles, this is how you would do it. So let's just say last. You see how that T is far apart? Delete the T, make a new T. Just there's multiple T's, so it doesn't matter which one. I don't remember which one it is, where he is. So give me a second. Um, what the hell? I can't do this. Uh, why? Why don't you? Mm. There he is. So get rid of the two. So pretty much put the T over here. Hit this. This would allow the T to go, be layered backward, like behind it. So this allows you to put the letters together. All kinds of stuff. This is where you change your palette. You can still access the other strangely unused one. And that's actually because they're for the drips. I actually figured that out. Piranha Plant mentioned that. You can't really make these custom. You can. Um, with certain things if you know how to do that. Like you saw in my Doomsday 2 video and Silver EXE's hacks if you played them. Um, you can't really edit these. You can, but that, as you can see, they have colors from the other palettes. And that's because... They told it that because they didn't want to make it some... It's strange. Basically, the secondary palettes are just for the drips. That's why you'll find certain ones do and don't have drips. Because things like this is um, this palette, basically. And then when you go to this palette... Stop doing this to me. That's the wrong thing. This is why, or whichever one it is. Why are you doing this? Which one is it? I don't, I don't know. Basically, the, the, these palettes fix these palettes. They need it. They're for the drops and all kinds of stuff. It's very complicated and difficult to explain, okay? So basically, once you're done, you just hit save. You apply whatever you need. That's how that works. And you would hit save or save all. Um, settings. This is your palette. 
this is your tiles. This would change the tiles and stuff as long as you hit it. These are all your things that you had in the other one. Custom tiles are no longer doable at the moment. Custom tile animations. Um, this is how you add palette fades and stuff now. It depends on what you do. It actually adds them in the order you do it. See, like, palette fade plus tile animation. Now let me remove them and do tile animation first. So pretty much after you do that, you just open this, you hit it, and it'll open it. It won't start playing, though. You actually have to close the level. I'm, not, I'm going to remove it, but so you can see. Or did I do that right? I don't. Did I apply it? Did I, did I not do that? What did I do? Oh, that's why it's not working. I did the wrong thing. It should. Uh, yeah. Okay, never mind. They do start working. Okay, I I don't know. I'm I'm not quite used to the. Okay, I'm I don't do a lot of animations because most of my hacks have to be preset. But evidently they still kind of work like the other ones. So I take that back. I think I don't know. I I'm sorry. Let me go back to the grass tile set and fix this. Basically, that's what you do for that. This is going to be the custom option. I think whenever he gets it added. This is your palette fade, this is your tiles, this is your sprite, but of course you don't have any custom sprite palettes and stuff, so you can't um, really change that. So this is all your regular stuff, and now when you have secret bonus, this is what you have. Bonus, secret bonus type. This is when you pick up the secret icon. This is bonus level, this is what level it'll take you to, and this is actually where stuff is coded to be correct, unlike the original game, because this is actually the last level of the coding. Um, basically, uh, when you play level 1, you go to cheerleader, not cheerleaders, uh, Day of the Tentacle, which is level 51, and 0, because they put it in the same thing. So basically, um, it goes to level 51 by default. You can tell it to be the bonus password when you get it. You can tell it to be a point bonus, which was actually unused, but I was actually going to have Piranha Plant change that, and I don't think you know, knew that until recently. But when you hit secret bonus, you can actually now get a point bonus. You actually don't have to hex it in now you can actually get it automatically. It's actually always been a thing. I think that's how the Omno team got it into their hack, as they just finished it or something. I don't really know. But yes, that's actually how this works. So if I just wanted to make it where I would go to level 2 if I got it, um, basically, yeah, I just hit 2, and then you would play level 2, and then you would go to level 2 after you played level 2, because it's trying to play it as a bonus, and it's, it's just strange and whatnot, so, yeah, that's how that works. So, this is just pretty much the same thing. Um, then there's tools. Paintbrush, tile suggest, rectangle select, pencil select, tile select, recess level, and sprites. I actually does bring up the sprites window now. L actually allows you to freely resize levels. You can actually now custom make level sizes and all kinds of stuff. Fair warning though, the smallest level size possible is like this. It has to fit within the screen size guide. If it does not fit within the screen size guide, it will crash. I learned that the hard way. Um, for the for hack, I did. So yeah, it's actually did. It's not out. No one's seen it except for a friend of mine. Um, but yes. Um, I plan to do something special with that, by the way. That's, um, that. These are pretty much, if you've used the original editor, this just allows you to hit a tile. You can paint it. This is tile suggested. It'll give you tiles that actually connect to the tile that you're moving from. This allows you to select things with a rectangular square. This allows you to select multiple tiles. Even if it's they're selected, this allows you to do different things. I'm holding Alt to do this, by the way. It actually says in the bottom left. I didn't know the original editor actually had this, but for those who want to do fancy editing, if you hold Shift, it'll do the mini grid, which is, I think, actually how the original people added the levels. Um, but yes, that's all of that. Um, then there's Clear. This allows you to preset a level. And it actually, if I remember, remembers the last tile you basically hit. So when you hit Clear... Remember this, so if you want like a clear, clear grass level and you just want to make it a house or something or whatever you want to do, hit the tile you want in the list and then hit clear. Then you have save as image. This is basically where it'll just open where you last save levels, where you tell it to. And this is where you just have an image of your level and be like, hey, like when I made a necrify or whatever. Tools, this is the same thing of 
just forgot to do that, evidently. So yeah, that's that. I apologize. That's clear. That's save image window. This is project and stuff. Restore default layout. Um, I'm not quite sure how that works. I've not messed with that. I think that's for if you're like, oh my god, I didn't do want to do that or something. This is like, are you sure you want to basically restore it? This is for if you make an entire uh, level or something like that. I'm not quite sure what it's for. It just basically restores your original if you made changes that you didn't like or something like that. But again, I don't really use it, so I don't really know. This just opens this. This actually hides that. I don't think you should do that. Um, oh, what, which one was it? Ooh, no. That's not what I wanted to do. I... Why, why, why won't you bring them back up? Um, I need those. Can you not? What did what did it do? <laughs> um. Oh, right, there we go. I can't see because I have tape on the right side of my computer because it's been cracked, and it'll be like, oh my god, it's cracked. When did that happen? Um, I appreciate the worry. If that crossed your mind, but it's actually been like that a while now. Oh, how could you do this? I ruined it. I think. I don't know. Um, and now it's back to the way I like it. I, I think, anyways. Is this everything? Um, properties up? No. Properties. 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 Where are the properties at? Where are the properties at? There they are. Um, let me bring you back. Okay, so now everything is set back the way it needs to be. Um, you can customize them to be always showing, not always showing. You can actually move these left and right and all kinds of stuff. So yeah, that's what that does. And then help just brings up an about Necrify. That's pretty much everything you need to know. You no longer need to worry about space, so you can add whatever you want for titles and stuff. Bonuses still crash if you have too many and all kinds of things. I think, I don't know, probably still think that's limited. You can't open multiple levels at once. Technically, yes, you can. But, like, in the original one, you were able to just drag your mouse and open it. Um, some levels actually have the lane pop up like that. I'm not quite sure why. But now you have to actually select a specific level and open them one by one. Um, there's all kinds of things you can do down here, it says. Um, so, yeah, you no longer have to also select something then hit control or copy something. You can now just hit it. You can like hold shift to do grid and hold control. You no longer can just tap control to copy. You have to move. Alt allows you to deselect things. Shift adds to selection. Um, this is a lot of the original stuff though. Some of it's new. Um, it's pretty much just the same. If you've used the other one, pretty much just the basics. Um, now let's get into sprites. This is pretty much... You can't edit sprites yet, but you can do a lot of uh, fancy stuff here. This is actually very useful if you want to work on custom tile, uh, uh, tile sprite animations. This will actually save whatever I do to this. You couldn't do stuff like this before. You could only sprite edit it, but now you have to still sprite edit and then do this because it's not done yet to where you can edit them. And instead of having to do a lot of hex know-how and stuff to change palettes, you can actually freely change palettes to anything you want here, basically. And this is what it will show like in-game, except for if you see my boss palette video, the bosses will affect this. So don't put him to that if you think that's neat. I'm leaving, unless you don't mind him looking like the boss. I mean, technically you can do whatever you want. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to look good, in my opinion, as long as it's fun. I mean, it would be nice if it was good, looked good. I mean, it's just mostly about having fun anyway, so. Yeah, don't worry about if it looks good. I mean, it's still, uh, like, a good thing to be neat and tidy. But again, it's just about having fun. So, yeah, that's pretty much what this does. You can just take these and throw sprites wherever you want um yeah you can also these are going to look distorted but if you know what palette does what like um zeke looks normal here but like this is his pants that look red this is his palette for that um you can double click to add sprites so just as an example we're not going to keep it if you want to i guess let's just say like 
if you want to throw a whole bunch of trampoline girls, you would do this. It actually does copy X and Y access pointers when you copy a sprite, so you do better to either move them around to your own liking or leave it. I don't know. It's complicated to explain, but pretty much if there's a sprite all the way, because you have a big amount of space to work with, if there's a sprite over here and you copy it, just like as an example, let me do this. I'm not going to keep this. And then you go to another sprite and you go to do what I'm doing and you hit delete and you hit paste. It copies the X and Y axis values. Basically, that's what that does. Um, let me... It's registering that when I deleted the coke. This does not like when you have sprites completely gone. It does not like that. So be careful on that. You can ish make it crash. So now what basically what I've done is when you throw cokes you'll throw nothing but trampoline girls. And I could also change the palette. I don't feel like that though, but you can also change the explosion. Um but so just like just as one more example um, we'll change the explosion to a whole bunch of different things, and you'll see them flash and go by. And this is what they'll look like in-game. So, this is what this will look like now. So, basically, you can do a lot of advanced, really, really advanced, especially if you know what you're doing. And you actually know how to manipulate and do all kinds of stuff um, for things. So you can actually make custom animations for everything. Again, there's a lot that's not done in Finisher. You're limited to what you can do. He's going to make it where you can add sprites, um, all kinds of stuff. So that's pretty much sprites. That's about all you can really do with them at the moment. So that's sprites. Let me save that I've undone everything. So. Misc. What this does is passwords, and it actually has BCD enough. This lets you know what victim's there for. And now, this is really neat. You can ro add rows of passwords because you can add levels. I'll get into that. It's not added that you can add levels in within the program directly yet. You have to do it a certain way. Passwords, see? Generate all ZAM style because they actually had a certain way they did the passwords. It's very confusing to explain. Generate all letters. Generate all characters. Um, I actually was doing stuff like this way before Necrify came out with Doomsday 2. But um, you can type, as long as it's in the password thing, um, you can do stuff like that. And you can now type the passwords or you can generate them ZAM style. You can generate them all letters and this will generate everything. Nothing is the same because if you go back and you look at the original stuff, like, BLHR is level 45 with all victims, right? But look, the first letter and the last letter are always different. And the middle letters are always the same. VLHX, VLHR, ZLHF, KLHD. But this allows you to basically make it where nothing is the same. So if someone was like, I think I get it now. This password should be this. And if this isn't, I'll just try every outcome till it works. Now they're going to be wasting their life because every password is different. And this allows you to use numbers, the exclamation point, and pretty much everything but the backspace, enter, and whatnot on the password screen. So this allows you to use numbers, just like whatever you have it set to do, basically. Or the sprites, or whatever, because you can edit them in a uh, sprite editor. Don't recommend that. Um, you do better to wait, because I think uh, Piranha Plant's going to make it possible to do it in this. I know it's really hard to wait if you want something like that, but it will be worth it. So pretty much, you just add the passwords and all kinds of stuff if you're wanting to do that. You add them and generate them. Like, if you just want to generate these, you generate it, then you hit add, and you can just type these and do whatever you want. So basically this allows you to do all kinds of new stuff with the passwords and allows you to add passwords. And now that's pretty much everything except for the final thing here. Adding levels. You can actually now finally edit Day of the Tentacle without having to worry about editing the other one. For some reason they put this in both 
places in the game. This is level 0 and level 51. This is actually literally level 51. You just can't access it because of what they did and whatnot. So just as an example that you can actually edit both, I'll change the music to title screen. I'll change the tiles to just something completely random and just change all kinds of stuff. Hit save and close both levels. Level 51 and then level 0. You can actually now edit everything you don't you can actually now have 56 levels basically now to a very ish complex part if you're wanting to add levels these are all your files in here like I've said before now these are all your levels see it does them in alphabetical order it doesn't matter what level it is because if you're gonna customize it or whatnot you can do whatever you want so um, let's just copy like this level it's going to make a copy of it. And now what you want to do is you want to name it to the next uh, number in the level. So there's 55 levels total. There's technically 56 in the original. So technically, yes, there actually is 56 levels. But unless you include the fact that it repeats, it's actually 55. So name it 56. And because 0 is a number, you now have 57 levels. And it's going to actually automatically pick it up. And it's going to look like the original level and this is how you add levels so now what you basically do is you just go in here remove this you tell it to be level 56 you change the title to whatever you want to name it um yes this is actually helpful you center vertically central horizontally or i'll do this horizontally basically this allows you to move letters up and down um i'm not quite sure how it works, I've not really figured it out, honestly. But basically, this is what I used for the T. Well, this is move it on the upper layer. So you move front, move back. That'll do that. Um, pretty much, you just do whatever you want, and you hit save, and then congratulations, you have added the level. Um, I don't think I missed anything. If I have, I apologize. But pretty much, this is how you use Necrify. Also, one more thing. Uh, I think I've said it, but I just want to say it again just in case. And even if I did say it, it never hurts to just remind people sometimes. You can and don't no longer have to worry about space. You don't, not that you can. And um, evidently you can with some things. I don't really know. Um, I don't know. I broke the thing in my last video when I made a massive army of uh, vampires. But basically, this editor works differently. It extracts all the files and you can edit them. There's all kinds of really uh, complex things you can do with them. I did not go into them because they're hex. <coughs> Excuse me. They're hex. So, what that's going to basically do is a lot of people are going to be like, well, I don't know how to do hex, or they're going to be like, could you make a tutorial on it? I could, I could but I'm probably not going to. Because I think Piranha Plant is going to make it where you can do it anyways. And so unless you just want it right now, you just do easy better to let me give you my notes. So you could do it and stuff because it's just a lot easier and all kinds of stuff. And it's just pretty much just not necessary. This is just basically the basics on what you're going to want to probably do and stuff. So anyways, if you watch up to this point of the... Well, actually, I forgot. Sorry. Again, you don't longer have to worry about space because this extracts files and then compiles them and it no longer has to worry about space because he worked really hard to make it sure it would always code its work. The other editor it was basically a visual hex editor. I'm sure that's confusing, but basically what it does is open the direct ROM file and edited everything. And so, it, like I said, it's a visual hex editor. It pretty much edited the hex, but visually, so you could see what it was doing. When you hit save, it was editing everything, and it was pushing level data and all kinds of stuff around. So if you had too much in a level, it would crash. Depending on what you have, it technically still will. But now, space is no longer an issue. You can have infinite amount of levels. You can have all kinds of stuff. There's still, uh, again, limits depending on what it is that you're trying to do. Like 34 weapons is a max. But be careful, because if you have a search spot and they don't pick up something, it'll crash the game. You have a monster that drops a key, it'll crash the game. And all kinds of stuff like that. So that's pretty much it. I hope this is very informative. I hope this is helpful. If not, I do apologize. I think I got everything covered. It's like 6 o'clock in the morning, and I'm tired. So, 
it's not. I'm not even really more so tired because I got up early. So if if I had been up all night, I probably wouldn't even be able to stay up and record. But um, that's pretty much it. So if you watched up to this point of the video, thank you. And if you enjoy watching my videos, you can subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to know when I upload. I also have a Discord server if you would like to join that. The link is in the description of the video. I also have a PO box if you would like to send me something. It is Zombie One One. P.O. Box 160, Somerville, Tennessee, 38068. This is Ami101 saying, have a wonderful day, and catch you later.